Jerusalem expert and Haifa University professor Moshe Amiraf was one of the young paratroopers who liberated the Western Wall in 1967. He was injured during that operation. Today, he has mixed feelings concerning that victory. Amiraf, a close friend of Prime Minister Ehud Olmert, served as an advisor on Jerusalem to former Prime Minister Ehud Barak at Camp David. Do you regret today having liberated the wall? You see, liberating the Western Wall has um, a personal feeling and also a collective feeling. And on the collective level, of course I'm happy because it belongs to Israel. It's a historical place. It is uh, something that we should uh, fight for. And some of my friends even gave their life for it. I was wounded there. But on the very personal level, I'm very disappointed. I think that it was a kind of a waste of all this blood and all the people who died there, that we have the Wailing Wall and we don't have peace. So actually only if we will have peace, I will feel relaxed about it. I feel that it was all worthwhile. Right now I'm very sad that I was part of this great thing of liberating the Wailing Wall. But nothing happened after it. I mean, I put this paper in the wall asking for peace, we don't have it yet. I have also the collective feeling as an Israeli and a Zionist. So I was very happy to have the wedding ball. I'm still, I don't want to give it up. And there is no need because Arafat agreed in Camp David that the wedding wall will stay under Israeli sovereignty. Moshe Amiraf believes that Israel's settlement policy in East Jerusalem was its biggest mistake after its 1967 victory. Then Jerusalem Mayor Teddy Kollek opposed the expansion of settlements in the eastern part of the city. Had Israel limited itself to annexing the old city and giving special status to the holy sites, the international community would today recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital and there might be peace, Moshe Amiraf argues. In his latest book, Amiraf offers his solution for Jerusalem. The old city will have a special status. Now this is not, I'm not original. Theodor Herzl in his book, Alte Neuland, we forget after all these years, wrote that the old city should be a corpus separatum. Now this special status is not for the whole of Jerusalem. So what I see in the future actually is three Jerusalem. One is the old city with a special status. One is the western city, Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, that belongs to Israel. And the third entity here will be El Quds. In Arabic, the Holy One, Jerusalem, for the Palestinians, its capital. We don't need sovereignty over the holy places. I don't think God needs a flag there. Not their God, not our God. He is not insisting on a flag in his holy places. By talking about sovereignty on the ground, in case of control, in case of police presence, etc., in the old city, who would be in control? Italy gave up sovereignty in the Vatican. Why shouldn't we do it in the old city? especially in the holy places, if Arafat would give up his idea of sovereignty over the Haram al-Sharif, and we could agree to Islamic one, we could be now at uh, peace with the Palestinian people. And the Second Intifada wouldn't uh, break down out because we could reach agreement. I always say we could agree in Camp David. We were very close on all the issues, including Jerusalem. You see, Arafat, for him and his priorities, number one was Haram al-Sharif. How do I know it? He told me. Number two is a Palestinian state. Number three is the refugees. In the land of Palestine, I can compromise. I can compromise on the number of refugees that will come back to Israel. One thing is not negotiable. And I asked him many times, why? And now I understand that for him, the Haram al-Sharif means that this is the pearl of Islam. As a Palestinian state, they have nothing to offer the Arab world or the Islamic world. They have no oil, they have no territory, they have no economy, they are dependent on Israel. With these holy places, if he is guarding the holy places, he has a status in the Islamic world. What about Hamas today? Do you think that they would agree to, for example, an Islamic solution? Definitely the Hamas can accept my idea of that the holy places belong to God belongs to Allah. If it belongs to Allah, why should it be Palestinian? Why not Islamic? So if you ask me if which flag do I prefer on Temple Mount, 
the green flag of Islam or the Palestinian flag, I would say the green flag of Islam. Begin agreed to it. Herzl agreed to it. Ben Gurion agreed to it. So I think that first of all we should speak with the Hamas. And then we will see if we can come to terms with them. Maybe not for peace. Maybe we can have a long ceasefire. A Hudna for 10 years. That's enough for me. I'm not asking for peace now. Let us have 10 good years. It's a lot. So can, no you, sovereignty. can you summarize where he should divide the city? I mean, what would be Israel? What would be the Palestinian part? Yes, we um, have the Clinton parameters that were offered then in the year 2000, both to Arafat and Barak. These parameters are logical. It makes sense. Wherever the demography is Arabic, will be Quds. Wherever the demography is Jewish, will be Israel. Now we have a few blocks of settlements, neighborhoods in the East Jerusalem, Jewish. They will be annexed to Israel. And that's the, that's the solution. Otherwise we are doomed not to have peace in the Middle East, because Jerusalem is the most important uh, element in the peace agreement. And for many years, you know, people say in conflict resolution, we have to put Jerusalem in the end. It's so complicated. I don't think so. I think it's very simple. I would say Jerusalem first. I live here, as you can see, around in a village. This was an ancient biblical village. Right here, my neighbor, 200 meters, is John the Baptist. That's his place. And not far away from here, 300 meters, is the mosque, which is called the Omar Mosque. And this is, uh, it reminds me all the time that for 500 years, this was an Arab village. And the house we are staying is an Arab house that it is demanded by the refugees to go back. They want to go back to this house, to this village, and Karim. So, in a capsula, you have the whole story here. I mean, Christianity and the churches and the belonging to Terra Santa, their land. And the Arabs who were here. But I also was here. And in my book, I tell the story of 1,000 years of Jewish farmers who lived here. And just to remind you, John the Baptist was a Jew.